What's up, everyone, and welcome to episode 206 of Two Amazon Sellers and a Microphone, brought to you by Solozo. Uh, and today, we got a, a pretty hot topic here. Uh, Amazon's recently announced that they're they're opening up different areas uh, through the platform where you can use video, sponsored display ads, other areas where uh, where you can utilize some of this video. And we know from the past, from when they released sponsor brand video ads, you know, when those came out, those converted very well. It was a scroll stopper when people were going through search. Um, and video has a lot of power to it in terms of um, in terms of presenting your product in a unique way to the customer. So we want to talk all about this. And we've got one of our favorites on with us. Uh, we love this guy. A friend of the show, I guess we could say, friends of ours, Keith O'Brien, founder of Page One. What's up, Keith? How are you doing? Hey, Dustin. I'm good, man. I just realized that I've got serious uh, background envy for both of you. Yeah, Chris, <laughs> Chris over there with the geometric patterns and shells and shaking hands with famous people. And I know his you know, is cooler. His is you've cooler. Got, you've got your great grandfather's tennis rackets back there. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. the, the, the degrees over here that I, I don't use. Uh, they, they, nobody would even know if those even have your name on it. Right? I know, so. I know. They were they were here previously, and I was like, should I leave those here? Because I really, it's I, like, I have, uh, I have it's a, like, it's like it's the like photos funny. that come in the frames when you buy the frame. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <Stock photo. laughs> Just hang those up. Getty images. Oh like, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, we got we kind of represent our little bit of our our backgrounds here. Tennis nice. is mine. Sports we love. Kansas City yeah. specifically. You know, it's it's well, since, since we last I was last in the show. I never really was a tennis player at all. I played it you know a little bit when I was a, a kid, but. I picked up pickleball oh, and yeah. I, am, I am addicted like nobody's it's well, first of all, let's say it's a healthy addiction as an adult, right? Yes, um, it is. But I've been playing, I started kind of actively playing maybe August after only playing maybe a few times previously in the year last year. I play five to six days a week right now. Oh my I mean, goodness. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, I play 12 to 15 hours a week. Yeah. I play a oh, lot gosh. too. Do you? I played, I played the other night. I played. Uh, yeah, I play. I play less now than I did. My wife plays all the time, um, but I love it. It's, it's yeah. It's it's fun. It's you can get a good workout in. It's surprisingly yeah. a good workout. Yep. Um, and it's, I gotta go off tangent here because tennis is unique in that it's so like skill dependent. Pickleball is too. But if you ha if you're a just a tiny bit off skill level in tennis, the match is not fun. In pickleball, you can kind of have a little bit of a range. Sure. And there's a little bit of an equalizer fact. I always tell that to people. It's like it it can it's really fun. On another yeah. tangent, we uh, <clears throat> we're working with a pickleball company actually. So they sent me a whole bunch of stuff, and this ties into videos. I told them, look, I'm gonna go play. I'll take a whole bunch of videos of myself playing with all your gear. Uh, see, I'll test it out. I'll do some reviews for you. Uh, it's super, it's super fun. And the industry's hot. I mean, there's new products coming in like yeah. crazy. I know you just didn't say you do reviews for them after being paid. No, <laughs> like a video, like a video, yeah. like a so, TikTok. Yeah, well, if uh, if they want a, a good professional video shot, you throw them our way. Uh, we've done yeah. we've done a fair bit of pickleball work uh with photos we started i think our very first photo shoot for pickleball was like five and a, five years ago and wow. uh i totally made fun of the sport when we first shot it back then oh, yeah. as everyone does but um yeah you're 100 percent right i mean the range the, that's one of the things i love about it you can go out and play and you've got you know a, a 15 year old kid playing with their dad playing with their grandfather yeah. playing with their mom all in the same court and it can be a competitive game Yes. And I think, uh, um, and the other aspect that I think you didn't mention was that it's insanely social, right? Like tennis is not a social sport. You play maybe at the, at the club after, yeah. right? And then, you know, you're like the, the housewives, right? Mm -hmm. So, but uh, it's because you're either waiting to play or you're playing and everything's, it's super, super social. So, um and it's also a bit of an equalizer. You cannot, you cannot look at someone and tell whether or not they're going to be good. No, you know, because no. uh, I know some guys that can barely move around. They're carrying a lot of extra weight. That they're amazing, right? 
Oh yeah. Amazing. It's, I, uh, it, it is interesting. I started playing tournaments a few months ago and uh, this, this last one I was at didn't meddle in the men's we meddled in mixed. Um, but the, the next rung above us, um, the gold medal ma- match, there was three out of four players under 16. Wow. That yeah. shows the growth of the sport. People are, people are training in it like they would tennis where you're, you're young and you're growing up playing. Yep. Sports. There's such a grassroots feel to it. Um, where like, I mean, you just can, there's places where you can just show up and the way you're, you're in line, you're just yep. setting the paddle down to, sh- to go next. The way that that sport was developed, right. it was really interesting because it allowed it. It was like a grass fire. It just spread everywhere fast. And I think that was one of the reasons yep. was the way that it was just, it was it was so easy to get involved, and it had a, like a very welcoming community. Yep. We'll see how long that lasts. There's yeah, a, we'll we'll every we'll sport see. goes through their different. Uh, pretty soon, they're gonna all the people are gonna come in and make all these levels, and you're gonna be isolated to your level, and that's yeah. what happens to tennis for sure. But it is right. fun. it's super fun. It is. That's awesome. Awesome. How often? How often do you buy a racket? It's a paddle, Chris. Get it's with a- the paddle. Oh, shit. <laughs> paddle so um so i have two of the same kind um because sometimes they crack the edge guard comes loose and you know now that i'm playing events i want to have two but um i mean you a paddle will last you quite a long time i mean okay it's it's a little bit like golf have with like getting new drivers there's a little bit of this thing where people want new paddles all the time but it's unnecessary to be honest and yeah. uh they they do last a while the grit will start to wear down a little bit but you know i mean it's it's already it's it's free to play the balls are you know in bulk a buck a yep. buck and a half you know an expensive paddle a couple hundred bucks and there's no other cost i mean the biggest cost to the sport is you know soreness on your body yeah <laughs> it's surprising i got to learn it's a yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll take you out. I'll take you out, Chris. We'll have a lot of fun. <laughs> no, it's a good time you. you'll, just, you'll be like it's a good time to invest in the physical therapy business. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Or yeah. or uh pickleball brand. I mean, they the brand loyalty when you're around and you see people talking about their paddle, the yeah. they they will stick with that brand. I'm yeah. telling you, it's su- it's super interesting. Uh to, I mean, it's still per, per fairly early. I mean, pickleball, pickleball's been around a while, but it's it's the growth has been close yeah. to the, the peak. And there's, <clears throat> yeah, to bring that full circle into talking about e-commerce, there's opportunity everywhere. You know, there's going to be shoes, uh, clothing. Yeah, everywhere. there already is. Like, you mm-hmm. know, someone launched. I saw um, Facebook ad the other day for uh, this like light foldable chair. You know, it looks horribly uncomfortable, right? Yeah. Uh, but you can carry it around. You need it at events. Um, there's, you know, a lot of courts don't have seating, right? So uh, it's a great opportunity. And this thing was selling for $99. I mean, it, that probably costs $15 <laughs> to manufacture. It's great, you know. Um, uh, but there is. There's tons of tons of opportunity in that space, and uh, there was just the big first big consolidation last year when the billionaire sports guy bought Pickleball Central, uh, APP, I think, and uh, mm-hmm. PickleballTournaments.com. It's crazy. Such yeah. a gro- such a growing industry. It's fun. Anyway, Chris, now you got to get in it. Now I got to learn. Yeah, I got to figure out the terminology first. Yeah. Well, get ready for learning how to keep score. That's always fun. Yeah, <laughs> and then you'll learn, and then it'll change next year, probably. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that's awesome, man. Mm-hmm. You're staying in shape. You're you're playing a fun sport, and doing all the other things that you do. That's Got awesome. it, man. You know, I mean, what what hobbies can you take up that are active? When well, you know, I turned fifty last year, and uh, you know, what are you going to pick up that's going to keep you in shape? Social, you know, it just where you, you know, can go from really sucking to decent in a relatively short amount of time. And absolutely. There's just not a lot of things like it, you know? Mm-mm. So, so I'm, uh, I'm grateful. It's been fun. It's been a great addition to my world. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, before we jump into talking about videos on Amazon, 
you were on episode 99. People can go back and listen to that. Uh, we had a great conversation. That was the first time meeting you. It was a lot of fun. Uh, but just briefly, you want to give everybody a little background um, into, into who you are and, and what you do for, for other businesses on Amazon? Sure. Um, so I, I guess it's seven and a half years now I've been in the space. Um, uh, the first entry into Amazon, um, a buddy of mine started a company called I Love to Review. It was the first like product review service that was you know in the market. Um, I partnered in, opened up an office here in Florida, and then he moved on to, he wanted to build an educational company for the industry. So he moved on, did that, and that went incredibly successful for them. Um, and so I, I took over that company as a CEO and that was like April of 2015. Um, and we built that business up really nicely. We were doing 25,000 plus reviews a month for sellers all over the world when, when the, when Amazon decided to, um, uh, make my morning coffee taste bitter when I got an email from, from them. Uh, and so we shut the company down. Uh, shortly after that, and and you know we we pivoted into an agency service by service based on what basically what we had been educating sellers on through. I love to review for free for the last two years. You know how to optimize a listing. You know really starting to understand conversion rate optimization for Amazon, which I think is what we talked about last time. Uh, and so we we did start slowly. We weren't like. I wasn't in a super hurry. Like we had, we had worked with thousands of sellers. We had made people a lot of money and we had a good reputation. And, and, um, so we just said, all right, how do we best, you know, serve this space and, you know, what do sellers need? And, you know, keep in mind guys, it sounds like it's not that long ago, but you know, 2016, you know, people were taking photos with their iPhone. They were, you know, co no one knew how to copyright for Amazon. There were the keyword tools were a joke, right? It was just, you know, I mean, everyone was doing their best, but they weren't very good. So there was a lot of opportunity there and a lot of need. And so that's what we did. And we started with content optimization. Then we launched a creative team uh, with photography and design. And then we wrapped around ad management beyond that. And then a couple of two, three years ago, we wrapped around brand management. Um, and we haven't launched anything new to the market uh, since then, except for video services. So uh, we had been doing video for in-house uh, full service clients uh, on demand, but I couldn't really figure out how to price it for the marketplace because e-commerce sellers, you know, the, as the catalog grows, that video cost could get astronomically high. And so everyone wants great video, but to drop $5,000 on a professional shoot is not in most, most, most people's budgets. And so um, we sorted out some way to price it. We launched that last year and it's, it's been really solid delivering really, really good value. Win, win, win all the way through. So that's, that's what we've been up to. That's awesome. And I know I probably said this last time, but page one is the best name for an agency. Thanks man. I it's every other one is like AMZ something or something this, you know, but man, page one, does that just nail exactly what <laughs> you're trying right. to achieve? Uh, it's, it's, that's good. That's brilliant. Yeah. Well, I love it. Good job. Thanks, on that. man. Yeah. Thanks. Well, so you've got into video, you guys are doing some things now, um, helping out your clients with video. Talk about what's, what's happening. I mean, it looks like there's going to be a lot more opportunity, um, through Amazon to, to utilize video. They clearly they're seeing the results of sponsored brand video ads and um, all the, you know, videos in your listings, you know, there's videos, you can do videos all over the place and that doesn't even touch like lives and posts and all the other things right. that you can do. But what, what sort of has you excited about what's going on now? Well, I mean, I think you, you, you nailed it, right? There's, I think that there's few arguments that would say that utilizing video effectively won't create a positive ROI, right? So if you look at where you can put a video, I mean, you can, you can use a video, like the, the, probably the most top of funnel would be, 
an ad, right? I mean, it's it's the first little entrance, but it's also one of the more, more uh, effective, right? So let's go through them all, right? So you can you can use them in advertising, right? Which you know more and more people are are doing now, but still very underdeveloped, right? We'll get back in it. Remind us to get back into that in, in a sec. Um, you know, for for solid sellers, you can put them on your storefront, right? Uh, you know, on your storefront, that's a bit more top of funnel as well, right? You could have a product specific video on your storefront. You could have a brand video telling your story in your storefront. Um, obviously on your listing, which used to replace image number seven, right? But as of us cutting this on 419, most categories have now, who knows if it stays, but as of today, most categories that the the image seven came back right and video now sits in position eight on a lot of categories so um you used to have to choose which image you do you wanted to you wanted to delete now because they're 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 playing with that kind of nice little like two rows of images now in the layout and so i think you know uh consistency they they added that eighth spot um and that's very bottom of funnel right so if someone watches that video they've already clicked on your listing they've already looked through all your other images and now they're going to watch a video like if if they watch through that video the chances of them uh buying are, are incredibly high so um then you got your sponsored brand videos if you happen to be in like uh in like a, a launch pad or a program like that you have, uh, you know, the A plus premium content. You can have a video in there. Um, that'll probably continue to evolve knowing Amazon, you know, over, over the next short while. And yeah, the, no one really knows what the sponsored display video is going to uh, um, look like yet. But as of this week, it looks like they're starting to at least create the framework to roll it out. Right. So all these are our needs for videos. All of them are slightly different formats. All of them are speaking to the customer at a slightly different time. And so all that understanding needs to go into how you actually create a video for the customer. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack there because <clears throat> you're talking about you're, you're touching customers at different points in their journey. you got those yeah. top of funnel, like what do we do with that video uh, as opposed to the, you know, spot eight on your listing where that video has to seal the deal. Yeah. You know, it's like what, there's all these different, and then who knows what, like you said, with sponsor display, you know, what are you doing with those? Are you highlighting the differences between competitors? You know, and then it's like, how many of these videos do you roll out? <clears throat> you know, what's the strategy of <clears throat> using the same type of video or, you know, for different in chopping up for the different formats, or are you even getting so granular where you're making like a separate video for each keyword that you're targeting? <clears throat> you know, I mean, there's so many things that you can you can do here. Yeah, it is kind of endless. I mean, what, so what we did, um, you know, and I think as an agency, like we've got a hey, when we roll something out, we want it to be obviously effective, and that's both from a marketing standpoint and a cost standpoint, right? Um, we've we've got to obviously make a certain margin on our work, right? In order for us to continue to be in business. And then the customer has got to get a certain ROI, right? A client, otherwise they're not going to reorder anything, right? And Or tell their friends. And so what we've done is we said, look, you know, when we take everything we do is project-based. So it's not, it's not product-based, although it tends to be product at a time. It doesn't have to be. Um, and what happens is we say, okay, um, let's say Dustin, your pickleball client, right? Okay. If it's one of the ones I use, we're going to want to talk, right? So um, <laughs> anyway, but like we're going to say, okay, where do we need? Where is video going to live for this for this product or this family of products on Amazon? And so what we do is we we maximize the efficiency of the creative side, the filming side, and post production, and so. This is where all your money is spent when in video production. So we get our head around where it's going to live. We design the entire storyline at once. And then we're going to get all that stuff in the can. We shoot once. And then we edit for where it's going to live, right? So what it ends up being is, you know, a project might, you know, might be 
three or four thousand dollars, but you might get four videos out of that or five videos out of that, right? And so, um, because so like on the on your listing, right? You want an in depth kind of like show the experience, like promotional type video, right? That really kind of like okay, now I'm almost to the point where I'm pretty sure I'm going to buy this. Let me you know take you over the edge, right? Let's show you the news. Let's handle some of the biggest objections. You know, uh, let's you know benefits and the features. Let's do all the things that you know you, a good video should do. Um, on the ad side, though, like if you don't get them past the first three to five seconds, they're not even going to see the rest of the story, right? And so you got to get more creative about that opening, right? And so what we'll do is we'll when we design a package we might write three to five different opening sequences for that first three to five seconds, right? And make sure we got them all shot. And so when we edit, we've got all these options. Okay, so, you know, cause you gotta get them to stop the scroll and turn the sound on, right? So you need something high impact in their face. Like, you know, pickleball could be, you know, a paddle like close up with the ball coming right at the screen. It could be bouncing it on the, you know, on the edge of the paddle, it could be, you know, high five and it could be something, but you need high impact. So it's like, get their attention, then tell the story, right? And on the video, on the detail page, you don't really need to grab their attention in the first three to five seconds. They're going to play it. They've got sound, right? Like as soon as I click on it, it starts to, you know, they're manually going through the process. So you got a little bit longer to, to, you've got more of their attention span because you've already earned it by getting the click and now having them go through the rest of your, your images. So, so that's fun. And what we've done is, you know, sometimes if we're in the studio and it's not big production value, we're producing videos at six, 700 bucks a piece. Yeah. It's invaluable. And I just feel like those videos, number one, not everybody's doing it. So it's an immediate yeah. differentiator. Um, the, 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 the things that I always, I'm curious about, I mean, you're, you're making lots of videos for lots of different clients and lots of different yeah. types. It's like the different messaging for the, for the different placements, you know, it's like, and I guess it's specific to the product, but you know, like a video can be a real good way to convey um, all the, all the detail. Like if it's a detail oriented product or if it's someone sure. to know specs and scope and, and see it next to things and, I, or like the materials it's made out of. It's a more engaging way than like reading the bullet bullet points for sure uh, to go through that. And I think yeah. for some, some products that might be the concern clients have is they want to make sure, is it made of this material? You know, what is it? Just the right. spec of it. And then other parts of it, you got to show, it's like, is that more important for some or is it more important to see it like how it would benefit their life? You know, are is it in a, are they in a happy, fun environment when they're using this? Does their life look changed from this? You know, that emotional touch, yeah. whatever their pain point is. Um, I mean, how do you how do you wrap your head around or, or d decide which direction to go? Or do you test that? Or what does that look like? Yeah, so the way we do it is we really look um, for the brand owner. Now, look, everyone's in love with their own products, right? But, uh, you know, as you start becoming a, a, a company and not just a product owner, right? Like you get a little bit less attached to the specific, you know, product. It's not like it's your kids, right? Even though when you're launching your first few products, that's what it feels like, right? So I think we lean on them to say, okay, what really makes this unique, right? So we had a, you know, we did a video not too long ago for um, like Omega supplements, right? Now, you know, so we started talking about, and I didn't know, like everyone thinks it's a yellowish, you know, pill, gross fish oil stuff. Right. But I guess pure fish oil is clear. Right. So who knew? Right. So anyway, so they're there. So in that video, we're showing the, their process for purities. And, you know, in a situation like that, we're using B-roll video from the ocean of where this stuff comes from and natural habitat, blah, blah, blah. Um, cutting back over to, you know, a model in the kitchen, taking this stuff, cracking it open, you know. So 
where we do a lot of stuff like that. If I think it's very product specific. And so if your product's really complex and you're getting a lot of questions or returns based on complexity of maybe using it correctly, you know, putting it together. There's a lot of different things you can do for that on the page, detail page video that will either help to, um, you know, uh, add credibility to reduce the level of questions, reduce doubt, um, uh, you know, make complex things simple, right? So the, whatever, you know, is your thing, that's what you can do. And then, you know, when all else fails, just make it look awesome. <laughs> I love the, uh, the, the rolling in of like the natural environment, the ocean. So that, this is good. I love having these creative conversations. Hey, you know, I, my wife's an artist. I, I throw stuff off her all the time and then she'll come back with a, an idea. And I'm like, I never would have thought of it like that. Like that, that that's a great way to, to frame it. Um, and it's really fun when you start working with really creative people who know how to, how to do this. It's amazing how you can present your product. I mean, it's, it's like you talk about these brand owners that they are in love with their products. You know, maybe it was an invention or maybe there was the, you know, something sure. they're, they're in love with it. And it's like a, another person can see that and then actually make it represent what they actually believed uh, yeah. about their product. And I think that's a, that's a talent. Yeah. It, make, it makes an impact. And the reality is like, we can do something that we think is great. And then there's like, you know, 50 other ways that it could have been done that could have been equally as good or if not better. Right. Even though what was produced was great. Right. So there's just an unlimited amount of ways to slice it and dice it and, and, and represent it. Um, you know, rarely do you need like the perfect exact perfect thing, whatever that is. Right. Um, you know, the average brand does not need, you know, a dollar shave club type of viral video to, to be incredibly successful. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. If you look at, you know, who, who makes really good videos, I have no idea who their production company is, but the brand nomadic, um, they just came out with, they launched, I'm looking for my backpack. They, I have, I own their backpack. It's a phenomenal brand. I've had two of them. Um, and uh but they just launched luggage and the first scene is the guy smashing the luggage with a sledgehammer uh see that's a scroll stopper of course of course yeah so it's good it's really really good um and, and just to cut you off is that that's a pain point for people who have luggage their luggage gets damaged all the time well it's like if that's the first thing you see you're like oh problem yeah. solved yeah, especially now, man. All all the transportation people are so overworked. It's ridiculous, right? Yeah. Like, I just went out. I got a knock at the door about two hours ago. Uh, I've been in this one wine club for like five years, right? And oh, no. so, and Fe I haven't opened the box yet, so we'll see. But FedEx delivered it, knocked, didn't get a signature. Just saying, yeah. it's wine, right? <laughs> and uh, uh, the box is is leaned up against the side of the house like that, you know, upside down, right? Um, you know, I think uh, a cool video would be, see what goes on behind in the airport from the plane to the little carrier belt. Just guys just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. put a GoPro on it. Just let a GoPro go through the whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> cool. exactly. Oh my God. Do you do, uh, do you do like a lot of like numerous videos for like one product, like seasonality videos? Like let's say Christmas is coming up um, and you made a video for us. Is there much of an impact if I like say, I want to reshoot a video because it's a holiday product and it is a gift? Yeah, it's a great idea. I think um, we didn't last holiday season, but um, I know that we do a lot on our brands for seasonality stuff um i mean there's only so much you can get you can get through amazon right like if you try to change you know the the big banner in your storefront it's likely going to get kicked off right like we we try to push through sponsored brand ads with seasonality type images and those don't always get through but um you know we'll see you know we'll we'll see this season coming up like we've got some stuff you know planned for mother's day father's day 
Um, but it is, you know, unless it's a really, really big time of year that the brand knows about, it's kind of a hard cost to justify for a video that's going to be out of date in it, you know, after a couple months. Yeah. I think that's the, that's going forward. The play here is <clears throat> obviously you can get a, a big boost out of adding video to your, to your content, to your listings. And obviously they work well for advertising if they're, if they're effective and done right. But, you know, you, you can see it already. Brands that have lots of money, they have the ability to test all kinds of videos, just really dial it in. But you're talking about, you know, thousand dollars a video or more. And you're who, you know, not a lot of, uh, not a lot of brands, like, like ours, <laughs> like Chris or my brands that we run. I mean, the, we don't have a $20,000 video budget, you know, to go out and do that stuff. And you don't really need it. I mean, like, I mean, most video companies, you know, average video cost for a single SKU product is probably 2,500 to five grand. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, ours are substantially less, but you know, our projects might average might be 2000, 2,500, 3000, 4,000, depending on how many videos we're cutting. Um, depends if we're in the studio or out of the studio, how many models we have, all that kind of stuff. Right. But honestly, if you're a brand owner and you have no video up whatsoever on Amazon, here's the, here's the beer budget champagne taste solution, <laughs> right? Because you, something's better than nothing, right? So like perfection is the, is the, the antithesis of progress right so take your take your images hopefully you have some images that you're not using on on for your image stack but even if you have the same exact ones take those go to canva get a free account on canva and put those together with some captions and turn your images into a, a video that you can at least start testing on sponsored sponsored uh, brand videos it's better than nothing Right. And you'll probably get a decent ROI on that. Right. So um, but having nothing just makes no sense because there is for what I don't care what kind of product you have. There are absolutely keywords with decent volume that have no videos on them still. Right. The, the, the inventory is empty and you're just sitting and let it go by. Right. So, you know, if you try to fire off a video like that against your biggest keyword, it's probably not going to work very well. But you don't need that to turn, you know, that'll take you an hour if you've never used Canvas before, Canva before. I mean, mm -hmm. it's so easy. Now, are those videos great? No, but they're they're better than nothing. Yeah, and you made a good point. I mean, you're just, the, the inventory is underserved right now on video. You can, There are opportunities. I mean, it's like the, you could take the, the opposite and do like, you know, sponsor product where it's wildly competitive and everybody has every keyword in all of those. Perfect. Camps. Yep cost per click super high, but you're talking about if you make a simple video that's going to cost you nothing because Canva's free and it's going to, well, other than your 30 minutes or an hour of your yeah. time. And then you're, you might get really low cost per clicks on those. On, you never know. Your, even, if your, your yeah. even if you're getting the same as what you're getting from somewhere else, you're picking up, you're taking a spot of inventory away from a competitor, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a good thing to, to cover, right? You know, and, and, the other thing is like, you know, if, if you're sitting on social content, right? Like put out a Instagram post or take, you know, something to start getting UGC, you know, video content. So what I'm excited about, like, you know, using UGC by itself, not so great, but if you get it professionally produced and you can provide the video company, the UGC, like that's something that almost no one's doing on Amazon and it's going to stand out amazingly well. Right. So that's going to be an area that I think is is going to shift a lot over the next couple of years. You know, everything Amazon's doing is is uh, they're building up every single platform to try to rival where people spend their time online. Right? They want people living there as much as possible. You know, I mean, they're not great at it yet, but it's getting there. Oh yeah. So if a brand has uh, UGC content. They, all they got to do is just provide it to say your services and you just cut them up and put them together? Well, I think we would. So look, the way that we do our, our videos. So like we have a, a 
two base packages, right? So if we're not going to leave the studio, it's a standard pack. If we're going to leave the studio, it's a pro. Or if it's complex where we need more time on the camera, it's a pro. Um, so those start at a base rate. Um, <clears throat> and then everything else that you'd want, we've designed as add-ons. And so like if you're a creative guy or you're a brand that has a creative director and you want to design your video, go ahead, right? Just storyboard it out. Hand it over to us. We'll shoot it, edit it, and you save a bunch of money because you don't pay us for creative direction. So, but if you've got UGC, you've got some some Instagram video testimonials or people talking about your product, some unboxing stuff that you've got people to do for free or you already paid for. Yeah, you just hire us. We can develop the the creative direction, use that content to mix it in with other cool stuff, and come up with a storyline that's compelling, right? Because you still got to, you still want to tell a story. You still want to, you still want to do good marketing 101 and emotionally grab the the audience and pull them in, you know, via their pain points, right? Um, and so you can utilize the UGC in a lot of different ways. Sometimes it's great to grab attention. Sometimes it's great to elevate a mood. Sometimes it's, you know, it could be used in a lot of different ways. UGC by itself, probably not all that exciting, but mixed in with the right storyline could be super, super good. I like that. Yeah, yeah I like that a lot. I mean, there's something about, yeah, and when you see a video video, like a well-produced video, I mean, you know you're watching a video that the brand created. Um, you know you know you're getting, but when you, if they're inside that, you're seeing like a TikTok or an Instagram uh, post, you know, it, as a, a viewer, you know, it's like you're getting that social validation Sure. You know, um, so I, that's interesting. I never really thought about that. You know, I repurpose content all the time, but thinking about using that in those types of videos is that's a really interesting. What, yeah. One other thing that you touched on was, was captioning. Um, what, what's, what are you guys doing in terms of it? Do you, is captioning a must uh, like all videos should be captioned or there's certain times you don't do it or I think our kind of school of thought is if there's a voiceover, you caption it, right? If uh, uh, otherwise you need graphics, right? So you need to pull in something that the customer can read or super early on, right? Because again, like you're, you're the video, let's say it's a sponsored, uh, sponsored brand video and advertising. Realistically, the only job of that video is to get the click, right? Like, you could argue that it's it's to get them leaning forward into the into you know feeling the pain the solutions of the product getting them a little bit deeper into the funnel you know psychologically but ultimately at the end of the day it's to get the click right so i uh, you think like okay so i'm much more likely to get a click if they turn the sound on right so then okay how do i get them to do that right um, and so you just kind of go back, you know, you kind of walk up the stairs back to the point of entry and say, okay, what, what's the job of each of these pieces, right? So the first three to five seconds, the job is singularity to get them to stop scrolling, right? And then the other, your next 20 seconds are going to get them to actually click on the ad. Um, so my dog's probably going to pop her head up here. She's, <laughs> that's all right. Yeah. We always like, we like guest appearances. She loves Zoom. <laughs> what's oh, up shit. Um, that's awesome she she'll literally lie around like a like a sloth all day and then i get on a zoom call and she's okay she's like pay attention to me pay attention to me. what's going on is there a party i'm not invited to over yeah. here <laughs> oh that's hilarious all right Santi. so you have a dog so now you can do pet products there right you go. there you go yeah, well, we charge extra for pet models. I'm just saying. <laughs> Tougher to pets, deal with. <laughs> pets and babies. Pets and babies. They don't follow directions quite as well. Yeah. No. That's no, hilarious. No. One one other thing that comes to mind, uh, we were talking to somebody about um, like animation in your videos or, you know, not even go, you know, or have it incorporated in. I forget. It was something about a uh, hand sanitizer. So their video was this big green germ that sure. like, like, zooms in and explodes, you know, it like, it's kind of a the pretty good concept in terms of uh, scroll stopping. Um, is animation a 
che cheaper entry, more expensive entry, or is it? Do you see anything good with it? Um, sure, I, I think all of it has a point. You know, a place where it works, right? So, you know, the old animation videos were kind of. It's you know now they're a little beyond its prime, right? Where they used to be really, really popular as like explainers and things like that. You know, I think, think they still have their place. Um, but sometimes, like if you look at like infomercials, right? Which are, is some of the best place to get creative content for for, uh, for videos, you know? And, and we all know that they're annoying, right? But- We all I mean, watch them. But somehow you, stay, you you watch them all. I mean, the 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 model has really not changed much in decades, and so like you know it's effective. Otherwise, you know the same companies wouldn't keep doing it. But sometimes you need it. Like, it, it, I mean, how do you create a microbe unless you animate it, right? You know. Right. So you know sometimes you need to do that. Um, but no, it's not cheaper. It's probably more expensive. Um, someone's got to create that right um it's kind of like the fallacy that like if you take like you know this microphone and you take a picture of it and you want to photoshop it into an image right like first of all that's it's very very difficult and we've all seen really bad work but that work done well is really time consuming extremely time consuming and so you know, when you create something that didn't exist and you got to create it from scratch, it's it's a lot of time. You know, Interesting. so it's probably more expensive. The uh, on we'll we'll have to wrap this up in a second. But one other thing that came to mind when they when they talked about video for sponsored display, what you know, one of the first things that came to my mind is you know, sponsored display. You can target your competitors and. Like there is an opportunity to do like differentiator videos uh, or even, you know, I don't, it'd be interesting to see where Amazon comes down on like what kind of videos they're going to allow in those spots, because you could literally make a like full comparison video of product A versus product B. As long as product A is non-specific, right? As other competitors, right? Right. Yeah, it'll be, I think that the, the two biggest things that are gonna impact what we can do there is the format and what the player, the viewer looks like, right? Cause you know, if, if it's just gonna be like this really tiny thumbnail like, box, mm -hmm. then, then there's only so many things that you can do. If when clicked, it goes into a larger viewer, um, it'll be interesting. So just, I think a lot still is unknown about it. Um, but videos already right now, it's the most um, uh, restrictive, right? In terms of uh, Amazon content, right? They wrote the, the AI on the video content has been going scrolling the videos has been going for years right so you know you can't do testimonials you can't do a lot of things in video um and so uh so that that's going to continue they're hard to get through it's then that's that's the one area way way more difficult than images right mm -hmm. yeah we got stuff kicked back some of it makes no sense like you you're not allowed in specific categories you're not allowed to address the customer directly so you can't say you or your right like uh -huh. if if you're in supplements you cannot whether they're pet supplements human supplements you can't address them directly you have to like be very superficial right um uh so it's just it's just interesting how amazon continues to police the content yeah, you know, and look, at the end of the day, that's better for everybody, but for oh, sure. Of course. Yeah. It'll be fun to see how this, how this evolves. Um, we'll, we'll be talking all about, you know, things that you're doing and, in the future with this, and we'll find out how the sponsor display ends up looking. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of strategies that can be rolled out once, once it's available, but we really appreciate talking. And I know people are listening and they're, they, they listen to you roll out your packages and how you're, you're doing combo shoots and you're just anything that you can make it more efficient to get more content out of uh out of one shot tell people how can they reach out if they if, if they're looking for this how can they reach out to you and work with you 
Yeah, well, I'd say first, look, if 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 you don't have a video and you don't want to spend any money, I'll t- just go back and take your images and go to Canva, right? Like, don't worry about hiring an agency. Just go knock the first one couple out yourself. Even if you're going to hire an agency, do that anyway, right? Because you want something to test against, right? Um, we almost never create one brand ad. We'll almost always do multiple versions unless it's just not budgetable. So, um you, we're at page dot one, so that's the URL. So p a g e dot o n e, just like it says by my name there that you guys were so nice to put up. Mm-hmm. Um, I in one of the one of the navigation items is video, and and you can uh, uh, you can jump over to there, and you've got a lot of examples on the site um, that you can go check out. We even list out on the site like examples of packages and how they were priced and then what that actually equated to in terms of number of videos for the client so you can get kind of a feel and i think there's some on there as low as like six or seven hundred bucks per video um uh, but that's how it is i mean we're busy i mean we're coming into it's april right we're coming into our season summer is when everyone gets ready for q4 Mm -hmm. so you know, if you've got stuff that's coming up that you know you need, get a jump on it spring, early summer before every agency on the planet is crushed with with <laughs> back loaded work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I encourage everyone to do that. Page dot one, best name of an agency out there. I'll say it again. It's amazing. Um, Keith, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. Good conversation. Uh, Always a good conversation with you. Oh, so it's good. So we will uh, we'll get you back on again in the future. We love talking to you, and we'll figure out our our next topic. We've covered sure. with you here. Uh, but yeah, again, thanks and thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, if you like content like this, make sure you're subscribing to our podcast. We're on all platform all podcast platforms. So go find your favorite and subscribe to us. You can also see our live streams on Solozo's social channels, so LinkedIn, YouTube. You can go there. You can subscribe to those as well. Um, Additionally, if you're interested in uh, optimizing and automating your advertising, specifically, like we talked about, sponsor brand video ads, and now this new display that's coming out, Solozo can optimize all of those campaigns for you, take that workload off. We'd love to talk to you about how we can do that and how our platform can help you. You can go to solozo.com, you can book a demo, and you're going to talk to either Chris or myself. So we'll go through everything with you, talk about anything you want. We, We love talking to Amazon. Uh, and we'll also show you the power of Solozo. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Keith, thanks for joining us. We'll see you all next time.